Oh, heck yeah. You guys have been asking for a video of this thing, and today I'm finally making it. This is an awesome vintage camcorder we're going to be looking at today. This is a Panasonic SVHS Reporter, model AG456, professional grade Super VHS camcorder from 1996. This is a low-end professional grade camcorder. Uh, what separates it from the really high-end camcorders of this time period were first of all the format. SVHS, while obviously being a high-end format, wasn't really what the highest-end uh, field camcorders for like television stations and, and such were using. Uh, most of those used Betacam. And the other thing is that this is a single CCD camcorder, whereas the high-end stuff of this time would have been 3CCD. So this is low-end as far as professional-grade camcorders are concerned, but it is professional-grade nonetheless. Customers for a camcorder like this would have been universities for journalism classes and stuff like that. Um, other businesses and institutions who needed a, a, a professional-grade camcorder for something or another. And indeed, small television stations, think PBS stations or or uh, local independently owned television stations would have used camcorders like this one in the field. So this is a really, really cool camcorder to have and I am so happy to have this. I got this at the thrift store. Luckiest thrift store find ever and I paid 10 or 15 bucks for this. Uh, friggin amazing. And even better, this thing works perfectly. There's nothing wrong with this camcorder. And it worries me because based on what I've read online, uh, most of these particular camcorders are dead now due to bad capacitors. Apparently, like so many other Panasonic professional camcorders and VCRs from this time period, these suffer from bad capacitors and most of them that I've seen record of online uh, are dead due to bad capacitors. But this one works perfectly. And that worries me because I wonder, when is it going to die? Why is this one still surviving? And I'm just worried that, you know, as much as I love this thing, it's all of a sudden going to die. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid it's just a ticking time bomb that's going to quit working on me eventually. I really hope it doesn't, at least not for a few years. But yeah, I don't know why this one's still working. There's no stickers on it that suggests it's ever been to a repair shop or it's ever been refurbished. Maybe this one just got really lucky for some reason, or maybe it's already on its way out. I don't know. All I can say is this one's working perfectly right now, and I'm really happy about that. And we will do a video demonstration of this camcorder. I'll record some footage on it, transfer it to the computer, and uh, insert it in this video. And uh, that's going to be pretty awesome. So I got this with a lot of stuff. I got it with the original hard plastic case, which we'll look at in a, in a minute. I got it with the power supply. And I got it with two batteries, um, which slot in here. A 12 volt sealed lead acid battery. But both batteries were bad. I managed to revive one of them, but it only uh, kept working for a little while and then it died again. So I'll have to get a new battery for this thing. Luckily, you can still get new batteries for this thing. This uses a Motorola Bagphone style battery and UPS Battery Center, who I've purchased from before. I quite like their products. They sell a battery to fit this and the Motorola Bagphone. Um, and it's quite cheap, too. So once the U.S.-Canada border opens up, I will buy a battery that I can put in this, and I'll be able to use this camcorder on battery power again. That'll be pretty cool. But for now, I just have to use it tethered to the power supply. Here's the, here's the carrying case. Got Panasonic on it. It says made in Japan. This camcorder was made in Japan, of course. This is a pretty sophisticated case. It's got a lot of compartments in it for different things. There's what all's inside here. You got this really shallow compartment up here, which was meant to hold the shoulder strap, which I didn't get with this thing. 
I imagine you could also store cleaning cloths or whatever in here. You get a legend down there for what goes where in this case. According to the legend, this compartment down here is supposed to hold a battery. But I'm not sure how because a battery won't fit in there. It's not long enough. So beats me. There's a 3.5 millimeter to RCA jack that came with this thing, but I don't think there's actually a place to use it on this camcorder. It just happened to be in the case. Here's the power supply right here. The cord that plugs into the wall. The original plug had the ground pin broken off it, so I put a new plug on it. And it's also got this cable, which plugs into the power supply on one end, and then the other end plugs into the camcorder. So you can run off the power supply. When the camcorder is plugged in, the battery in the camcorder will charge, so it can charge the battery right in the camcorder. But the power supply also had an auxiliary power output that you'd connect a battery into so you could charge a battery from outside of the camcorder. But I didn't get the adapter to plug a battery into that. And kind of neat, it was only preparing for this video that I discovered this. This case actually has a compartment to hold a cassette. It's held in there and then you flip this little thing away and you can take your cassette out. I do not have a Super VHS cassette, so I decided to use this new old stock Memorex HS VHS cassette, T120. This is probably from the earlier mid-90s. I got it brand new in the shrink wrap. And I modified it so that the camcorder sees it as an SVHS tape. To do that, you drill a hole right here. And that tricks it into thinking it's an SVHS tape. And it works. The quality is probably not quite what you'd get with a genuine SVHS tape. But you do get some benefit of quality improvement over if I were just using this as a normal VHS tape. So it's a neat little trick if you don't want to spend the money on a genuine SVHS cassette. So I'll put that aside because we'll be using it later. And if I were putting the camcorder away, I've got to collapse this lens hood here. You would lay it like that. The viewfinder swings out of the way like that. And there you go. Everything stores in this case. Very, very nice. So I didn't get this thing with the original lens cap or lens hood, but I did get it with some aftermarket stuff screwed onto the lens. So there's what it looks like with nothing screwed onto the lens. And then whoever owned this thing before me put on this Vivitar 49mm to 52mm thread adapter. And then a Hoya 52mm ultraviolet filter. And then this Hoya 52mm rubber lens hood. And this whole stack of stuff just screws on there. Just like that. I used to wonder, because I've, I've gotten a lot of cameras in the past that had UV filters screwed onto the lenses, and I always took them off, because I was like, you know, why, why do you need this? Of course, UV filters were important back in film photography days, but I never knew why digital cameras and stuff had them. And then it, it occurred to me, it's to protect the lens. <laughs> you have a glass UV filter on here, you're going to get that scratched up instead of your lens, and it's really easy to buy a new UV filter if you get it damaged versus if you damage the lens itself on the camera. So now I know why people put UV filters on their cameras, so I've embraced that as well. So I keep the UV filter on this. So there's that. Um, let's take a look at this thing. Uh, 
I'll start over here. There's your cassette compartment. Over here is a sticker. It says manufactured September 1996. That's uh, on the viewfinder. The viewfinder, interestingly, is treated as a separate entity from the camcorder itself. Like if I swing it out of the way and read this sticker here. It says Matsushita Electric Industrial Company Limited. Electronic viewfinder for VHS movie model AG195, AG455, AG196, or AG456, which is this unit. So they use the same viewfinder on four different camcorders. The AG196 was the normal VHS version of this unit. The AG455 was the predecessor to this unit, and then the AG195 was the predecessor to the AG196. The viewfinder's got a diopter on it, and this rubber eye cup, which you can flip out of the way. And there you can see the CRT itself, or a reflection of the CRT itself. The CRT is actually pointing this way. But yeah, nice if you just want to glance at the viewfinder without putting your eye up to it. And it makes it easy to clean as well. Just like that. SVHS Reporter. SVHS Movie Camera for Recording and Playback, AG456 Pro Line. That is a port for a character generator, so this thing doesn't have a built-in character generator, but you could plug one into it and add text on top of your videos. There's your record start-stop start, start stop button. And you have another one right here, does the same function. There's your power zoom control, and it is variable. There's two or three speeds in each direction. This thing has a 12x zoom lens, and in addition to the power zoom, you get manual zoom, which is very nice. The lens has a focal length of 5.6 millimeters to 67 millimeters. You get a manual focus ring if you want to use manual focus. It's electronic. Put the viewfinder back out here. That is a little infrared sensor, I believe for a remote control. And then a little LED to show the subject when it's when you're uh, recording. Very nice microphone on this thing. Take a look at this. Stereo. This is a stereo microphone, which is so cool. And it's got a nice foam sock on it, which is still in good shape. And it's mounted on this rubber bushing, which is also in good shape. Very nice. You can also plug in an external microphone if you want, and I would assume that accepts a stereo microphone. And you get your different mic modes, wide, tele, and zoom. And I've seen this on so many camcorders and I do not get what exactly it changes. How can you make a cam how do you how can you make a microphone work for stuff close up or for stuff farther away? Maybe it just changes the gain of the microphone? I don't know. If we look at the bottom of the unit, there is a tripod adapter and a sticker September 1996. Based on what I've read, this model was sold until at least 1999, and I read articles suggesting that these were in professional use as late as 2007, if not later. So that's pretty neat. You've got an accessory shoe up here. It's not a hot shoe, but if you had like a microphone plugged into the microphone jack and you could put it on there, or if you had a self-powered light, you could slide it in here. Very nice. This vinyl pad rests up against your face when the camcorder's on your shoulder. And it's got a little speaker right here. So when you're playing back footage, because this thing can play back the footage it records, which is good because I don't have a Super VHS VCR, you can listen to the recording through this speaker. It's it's very quiet. It's just it's just meant for to be loud enough that you can hear it when your ears up to it when you have the camcorder on your shoulder. There's your tape eject and battery eject switches. 
your power button right here. And a nice feature of this thing is you don't have to record with SVHS. You can force it into a VHS fallback mode if you want. It'll do it anyway if you insert an ordinary VHS tape. But if you have an SVHS tape inserted, but you want to be able to play those recordings on an ordinary VHS VCR, you can just switch, set this switch to off and it'll record an ordinary VHS signal. Very, very nice. Under this door, and the only thing wrong with this camcorder is this door is a little bit broken, but uh, there's controls for the tape counter and tracking. This thing, of course, has automatic tracking, but if you want to manually track the tape you're playing, which might be useful if you're playing a tape in this thing that wasn't recorded on it, that could be useful. And I'll swing the viewfinder out of the way again. And here's a lot of our business end of things. Got a lot of switches on here. This focus button lets you manually focus if you want. You give that a press and then you use the focus ring. Press it again and you're back in automatic focus mode. These two buttons increase or decrease the shutter speed or the aperture depending on which is selected and you select it with this switch. Have it up select to select iris. These will change the aperture. Set it to shutter and it'll change the shutter speed. Your mode switch right here, automatic, manual. If you put it in manual mode, that enables the iris and shutter selection and other manual controls. You got a white balance button right here. Low light, which forces the aperture all the way open and the shutter speed all the way down. And then there's also a portrait mode, which will, I believe it keeps the shutter speed automatic, but it opens the aperture all the way so that you can focus on a subject and the background will be blurred because the aperture is open all the way. These buttons, Digital Tidler, odd name because it doesn't have to do with the character generation, um, but it has to do with transition effects. So this thing has some special digital effects that you can do. Um, these three buttons have to do with superimposing a still image over your video or transitioning between a still image and what you're shooting. Um, so you can point the camera at something in the record standby mode and hit either wipe or mix and it'll store a digital still image of what you're pointing at into memory. And then when you press start it will superimpose that digitally stored image over your recording. If it's mix, it'll uh, fade between them. If it's wipe, it'll wipe from one to the other. And we'll demonstrate, it's, it's hard to explain, but we'll demonstrate this uh, when we do the recording test of this thing. And then we have the switch digital mode select because it can only do a certain number of effects at any given time. So if you want to use the digital tidler, you have to have the switch down. Having it down also enables these two functions. Tracer, which is short, sort of a gimmicky effect that sort of blurs the image and gives it... Uh, it <laughs> my description of it is sort of an 80s or 90s pornography effect. So that's Tracer. And then Gain Up, which increases the uh, gain of the image sensor to make the image brighter. If you push, push the mode switch up, the digital tidler functions are no longer accessible, nor are tracer or gain up, but you now have digital zoom. So this does have digital zoom. You can get up to 100x, which is pretty impressive on a camcorder of this age. And you can do a strobe effect, which is exactly what it sounds like, where the image updates like twice per second or something like that. So that's the digital modes on this thing. And then we have some more buttons down here. This button, timer or interval recording. Uh, with timer you can start recording and it'll record for 20 seconds and then stop. Or if you have it in interval mode, it'll record for one second every 50 seconds and it'll do that automatically, continuously, for 10 hours. Very neat if you want to get a time lapse recording is your date time button to put the date or time on the video. Your on-screen display. 
This does have a fade function where you can fade in and out the video when you start or stop recording. And the camera search function which, which lets you review what you previously recorded while you're in the record standby mode so you don't have to go into VCR mode to do that stuff. So that's the switches over here. If we go up at the top here, uh, this is actually a switch. When it's pushed that way, you're in camera mode. If I push it down, it goes into VCR mode. And now we have our VCR transport controls. Play, stop, rewind, fast forward, pause, slow motion, advance. And these two functions, audio dub and insert, which are so cool. What insert does is you can record something on the tape, but then you can record new video over top of it while preserving the original audio. And audio dub is the opposite. You can record new audio over a scene while preserving the original video. And what's really cool about these two functions is you can switch between the original audio and the overdubbed audio, because the insert function still preserve it not only preserves the original audio but it records new audio along with the new video but it prefer, preserves the original audio audio dub also preserves the original audio and you can switch between them and how you do that is down here there's a switch that says audio select and there's three positions hi-fi mix and normal when you record something on this camcorder just a normal recording it records like any vcr like any hi-fi stereo vcr it records both the linear audio track and the hi-fi audio track well when you do an audio dub or an insert recording it overwrites the hi-fi audio track but it preserves the normal audio track so after you've done your dub or your insert edit, you can switch back and forth between which audio is heard, either the original or the dub, with this switch. Or if you want to listen to both at the same time, you can put it at mix and you'll hear both the hi-fi and normal audio tracks. So you'll hear both the original audio and the dub. That's such a cool function. That's really nice. Now, something that's important to know if you're using one of these, if you're just shooting stuff but not doing any dubbing, keep it in hi-fi mode. Because if you record something on this and you play it back like you play it into your computer or play it on a television or whatever, if you have it set to normal, it's only going to play the normal audio, the uh, linear audio track, which is obviously going to be less quality than the hi-fi audio track. So make sure you have it set to hi-fi. Likewise, don't have it in mix unless you're unless you're actually doing some dubbing or editing work. Don't put it at mix either. Because if you set it to mix, it's going to play the hi-fi track and the normal track simultaneously during playback. And because those two tracks are like a few microseconds apart, you'll hear some really weird beat frequency effects. So beware of that. Unless you're doing dubbing work, just always leave it at the hi-fi setting. Unless for some reason you want the lower quality of the linear audio track, so set it to normal. I don't know. But anyway, that's how this switch works. And it's really cool when you're doing dubbing work because you can switch between what you dubbed and what was already on there. And then this is the on off switch for the speaker that's right here. So yeah, there's the audio dub and insert features and we will demonstrate those when we do the recording test of this camcorder. Push this panel closed and it goes back into camera mode. Moving back down here we can see here's our AV inputs. We have composite AV out, but we also have an S video out. And I did buy an S video cable for this thing so that when I transfer the footage to my computer, I can use S video instead of the composite, which will look nicer. That's your DC input. That is a jack for, I guess, an editing console or an editing remote. So if you wanted fine control over the playback of the video, if you had like a jog wheel or something, this thing can accept that. That's a remote jack. And if you hook an RF modulator up to this thing, which I didn't get with it, RF modulator needs electricity to function, so that's a little DC output for an RF modulator. So that's the jacks on the back. And I think that's pretty much all the controls of this. 
All right, I've got this thing plugged in. Let's turn it on. Pull the viewfinder out. The viewfinder can move horizontally to match the shape of your face. Lift this up here. There's the viewfinder. Complaining that there's no tape inserted. So let's change that. Hit eject here. There's inside the VCR. It's a forehead hi-fi stereo machine. So let's put our modified VHS tape in that now identifies as SVHS. Alright, and with that, this thing is ready to start recording, so let's do that. Let me put my phone down and pick this thing up, and we will start our recording test. I'm pretty excited. Yay! We are recording on the Panasonic SVHS Reporter model AG456, low-end professional grade. SVHS camcorder from 1996. Alright, so you just saw me demonstrate the fade feature. I can also fade out. But I'll just let go of the fade button and we'll fade back in. So let me try the zoom. This is the power zoom. Or I can zoom manually. Oh, once I find the lever, just like that. Very fast for manual zooming. If I put it in manual mode, this is me closing the uh, aperture. And that's fully open and then that's open with some gain applied what can I do here so I'll try the uh, I'll try the image superimpose function ah there we go And how do we do the wipe? Oh, okay. There, that's how that works. Here's out my dirty window. There's the flocus down there. I've been referencing the manual throughout this uh, video. To make sure I didn't give the wrong explanations of stuff. There's a shelf I put in recently to try and neaten the apartment up a bit. Got the uh, white trash hi-fi stack all set up. Cassette deck, VCR, TV, this AM FM tuner that I've got to make a video of, another VCR, Audio Technica ATLP60X turntable that Bridget got me for Christmas, DVD recorder, a Sony Watchman that I have to make a video of, <laughs> some GPS's I have to make a video of. Oh yeah, I got a lot of stuff backed up. Now let's try the uh, 
special effects here. Okay, so that's the game. That's how that works. Uh, the tracer. Oh yeah, so this is the tracer. You get like a 90s or 80s porn effect. <laughs> And there's the uh, digital zoom. So let's see, what does this do? If I zoom all the way in, ah, now the digital zoom's kicking in. So that goes to 24x. Then if I hit it again. It goes to a hundred. Now it's off. So that's the digital zoom. And then the strobe. How does this work? Okay. Okay, so I press it once and I guess it just freezes. I am now dubbing audio in a later recording over top of this previous recording. You should be hearing both my voice and the music at the same time. A touch of God's great hand, this island must be. Prince Edward Island is heaven to me. Now, if you're wondering what the quality difference is like of SVHS versus VHS, we're in SVHS right now. I will now force it into VHS. And here's what it looks like in VHS mode. And then I'm going to put it back into SVHS mode. And now we're in SVHS mode. 
So I will finish this off with some field footage that I recorded back when the battery for this camcorder was still working. Uh, I took this stateside with Bridget. We were in Bridget's old car, just going down the interstate, and uh, I uh, shot some footage uh, there. So here's what that looks like. suggest um, Chinese food for lunch, but um, I'm pretty sure that's the place that got me sick in the first place. Oh, crap. Ooh. Gonna have second thoughts about... Whoa, that's a nice Oldsmobile. Gonna have second thoughts about that for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's already been said and done. Yeah, she's like, it's already happening. <laughs> are you taping me being unkempt? I am. You are not unkempt. You are looking very pretty in my X shirt. Well, my hair is not where it should be, but that's alright. There's the Wonder Woman mobile. <laughs> How old are 
these kids. Oh, did that ball just hit the, the usher's nuts? I don't. The umpire, you mean? No. I or don't. yeah, the. <laughs> did I say usher? You did. <laughs> It might have. It might have. It just goes, the ball flies all the way to a bar and hits an usher in the balls. Ah. You suck! Baseball is a big deal in Japan. Is this in Japan? No, but um Oh, the, I was gonna say the, that's why everyone's Asian. Well one of the teams is from Japan. Oh it's Japan against Curacao. Against who? Curacao? Kura Kuraco? Is that how you say that? I can't read it without my hold on. If I can zoom up on it, I'll be able to read it through the viewfinder. Curaco, I think it's called. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Damn, no hits. They're just playing strike or foul. He hasn't swung at it yet. Did he just strike out? Why are you taking me? Because <laughs> you're pretty. Aww. You're pretty. Come on, swing at something. There you go. Oh no. Ah, oh, they got it. He's out. What is this? I don't know. It's decades, so you know it's going to be old. Well, the first clue to me was that it's in black and white, not that it's on the TV channel Decades. Well, <laughs> if you're going to be that way about it. <laughs> looking at some marketing materials now. Uh, first, we're looking at this old B&H photo video pro audio catalog. I don't know what year this is from, but it does list a few of Panasonic's, or probably close to all of Panasonic's professional video camcorder offerings at the time. This was their low-end professional unit, the lowest-end professional unit Panasonic had, the AG188 standard VHS. Ideal for those just getting started in video, as well as for educational and institutional applications. 14x lens. Uh, low light capability, audio video fade, external mic input, and a convenient compact design. Less than 4 inches wide and weighing only 4 pounds, the AG188 is extremely portable and easy to handle in any shooting situation. 3rd inch CCD, 1 lux sensitivity, unidirectional microphone, so just a mono microphone. Up to 90 minutes of recording on the battery. And this one actually included a 10 watt light that presumably went in the hot shoe, or the accessory shoe, rather. Here's the AG196, the VHS version of my unit. A premium alternative to the AG188, the AG196 has advanced recording and playback functions, plus digital effects to meet many diverse applications. One third inch CCD, 420,000 pixels, 14x zoom, record down to 0.7 lux in digital gain up mode. Five pin and synchro edit terminals allow use as a player in an editing system. Adjustable viewfinder for left or right eye use also has vision correcting eyepiece. Oh, I'm left eye dominant. I wonder if that rubber eye cup can be f flipped around to fit my left eye. That would be nice. One year warranty on parts and labor. That's not very impressive for a professional camcorder. 
The AG-188 and AG-196 are industrial type camcorders manufactured by Panasonic's Broadcast and Television Systems Division. They are ruggedly built to meet a range of demanding applications from event videography to education, law enforcement, and industrial video. They both include AC adapter charger, battery, AV cable, shoulder strap, hard system carrying case, UL approved three prong grounded AC cord, and one full year warranty. There's, uh, there's some examples of who would have bought these. And there's your proof that these are a professional grade camcorder. They were made by Panasonic's Broadcast and Television Systems Division, not the regular consumer electronics division that made their consumer camcorders. And then they do have the AG456 down here, SVHS Hi-Fi Camcorder. The AG456 features advanced recording and playback functions as well as special effects to deliver outstanding performance for a variety of industrial applications. Lightweight body, 12x zoom, editing functions. It combines with the Panasonic AG1980 SVHS VCR. Beautiful VCR. I would love to have one someday, but I probably never will because these literally have all died of bad capacitors. Um, and there are people who offer services to replace the capacitors, but at the end of the day, you'll spend several hundred dollars for a uh, fully working VCR. But it's a beautiful VCR. And the AG A96 Edit Controller to form an economically priced, easy-to-use editing package. The AG456 gives you a head start in ENG, wedding, wedding videography, and countless other applications in business and education. Low light capability down to 3 lux and 1 lux in the digital gain up mode. SVHS system records and plays back 400 lines of horizontal resolution. Employs laminated amorphous video heads. The extremely high magnet magnetic saturation level of these heads contribute to an exceptional picture quality that features high resolution, superb color reproduction, stunning rendition of details, and high signal to noise ratio. And here's some optional accessories you could have gotten. Uh, cigarette lighter adapter, of course. RF adapter. And then the pause remote that would go into the, to the uh, remote jack. And there's the character generator. Quite a fancy looking thing. Model VWCG5P. I almost want to take a look on eBay and see if I can uh, find one of these. Up to nine title pages, four character sizes, 20 characters by nine lines. Time, date, stopwatch recording. That's cool. Title movement, scroll function, multi-language capability. Wow, that's really neat. There's the specifications. Now, for your, you know, really high-end professional customers, your, uh, your television stations, uh, documentarians, people like that, if they weren't married to Betacam, they might have used something like this. This was the real high-end professional stuff. The Panasonic AG DP800H Supercam, half-inch, three CCD digital signal processing SVHS camcorder. The AG DP800H Supercam is a professional three CCD camcorder that incorporates Panasonic's Emmy award-winning digital signal processing technology. Superbly designed, the Supercam is ideal for ENG, production, education, sports, and event video applications. It provides outstanding resolution of 750 horizontal lines, which is really remarkable, a superb signal-to-noise ratio of 60 dB, and a superb minimum illumination of 2 lux. And here in this ad from Popular Photography, March 1999, this company was selling the AG456 for 1200 bucks, which is actually pretty cheap for what you get. For comparison, they had one for twice as much, a DV, a mini DV camcorder. And then a 3CCD, probably mini DV camcorder, $2,100. There's the JVC GYX3, that's a high-end professional SVHS camcorder, 3CCD, $2,800. So, for what you got, $1,200. Pretty darn affordable. I mean, even over at the consumer camcorders here. Of course, Mini DV was the hottest new thing, and these were selling for $1,200, $3,000, $2,900. So yeah, quite the value if uh, Super VHS was what you were looking for. 
and you didn't need the exceptional quality of a 3 CCD unit. And that, my friends, is the Panasonic SVHS Reporter model AG456 professional grade SVHS camcorder from 1996. What a beautiful piece of vintage video equipment. I am so happy that I got this. I'm very happy that my unit is functioning perfectly. And I hope I can find more opportunities to use this thing. I might try to take a stab at using it to film YouTube videos. I'm not sure how that would work. Um, especially for my usual videos that involve, you know, hand holding the camera, just where this is a shoulder mounted camera and kind of heavy and stuff like that. But I'll definitely be getting a, a new battery for it once I can. And uh, it's just it's just a really cool piece of equipment to use. I'm really glad that I uh, got a hold of this. And I hope you guys enjoyed learning about this thing. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.